October 27, 2011, a state of the art twin engine Beechcraft King Air departs Vancouver International Airport. Bound for Corona, British Columbia, with two crew members and seven passengers on board. Only 15 minutes into the flight, at 16,000 feet ASL, a serious problem is noted by the captain a serious oil leak coming from the left engine. The crew have few options. The crippled engine will not produce power for much longer and could send the stricken plane crashing down in inhabited mountains. Aircraft stored in hangar overnight, mechanic completes an inspection and adds oil to the left engine. All maintenance is signed off as complete. Captain arrives at the hangar and spends about two minutes with the aircraft before pulling it out of the hangar. Copilot joins the captain outside where the aircraft is being filled and no pre-flight inspection is complete by either of the pilots. During loading, a passenger notices a small puddle of oil under the left engine and tells the captain, which he ignores. So, as we were boarding the plane and walking up the steps, I noticed that there seemed to be a puddle of some kind of liquid that was dripping out of one of the engines and making a puddle on the ground. And I thought that looked unusual, so I told the captain about it, but he just kind of shrugged it off and didn't really seem to indicate that it was much of a problem. So I got on the plane and I sat down and I didn't really think too much of it, but I had that feeling in my gut that something wasn't quite right. I don't know, I just, I, it just didn't feel right. And I should have done something about it, but I didn't, I didn't know at the time. The plane taxis out and takes off with no incident. Fifteen minutes into the flight at 16,000 feet ASL. The captain sees the oil leak. Looks like we have an um, oil leak. We'll have to go back. As conversation with the co-pilot informs passengers that they will be diverting back to Vancouver. Attention please, this is your captain speaking. Uh, we just uh, recognized an oil leak. That's nothing to worry about. We're just gonna head back to Vancouver. Uh, sorry about the inconvenience. I didn't see the wear as I was sitting on the right side of the plane, but I noticed that a couple people were pointing at something out the window. When the captain said we were diverting back to Vancouver, I was uh, more annoyed than anything. I was supposed to be at a business meeting in Kelowna the morning. I didn't think it was uh, serious. So when the captain announced that we were diverting back to Vancouver because of an oil leak, I kind of knew right away that it was in some way connected to what I had seen before. And I couldn't see it because I was sitting on the other side of the plane, but um, the other people on the other side were pointing at it and it looked like it was, you know, fairly severe. So I kind of had that feeling in my gut just kind of came back and I knew that, well, what I had seen was probably something that was wrong and I felt a little bit guilty for not doing more about it because now we were in a situation um, where people were at risk and I just, I was kind of scared because I didn't know what was going to happen. Center, this is King Air Golf X-ray room X-ray. We're uh, experiencing an oil leak and we need to return immediately. Roger, King Air, Golf X ray, Romeo X ray, turn heading 240, descend and maintain 8000. Are you declaring an emergency? 
heading 240 descent to 8000 and negative everything's all right for now king air golf x0 my rex way you are cleared to a visual approach runway 26 left Visual for 26 left, uh, Golf, X ray, Romy, X ray. Flaps 30. Uh, golf, X ray, Romeo, X ray, would you like emergency services on standby? Negative, we're fine. Golf, X ray, Romy, X ray. Gear down. Flap sixty. Ninety nine knots. Our speed is too low. Add more power to the right engine. He struck a major road, broke into severe pieces, and burst into flames. Two cars and a cyclist were on the road, but not injured. Cars stopped at traffic lights, got out of the vehicle, and rushed it to have passengers. Yeah, so last week it was very traumatizing. So I was coming, going home from school. And I went near near an airport. Well, I think it was an airport because I saw a few planes taking off. And uh, like I, I saw that plane, it was just above my head, and it, it like turned really abruptly and dived to the ground, and it, it exploded like just behind me, I, and and like I, I even got hit by by something. I don't really know why. I don't know what, but it, it was really stressful. So I, I I turned I turned back and I saw like the huge flames going on, and yeah, I, I think the pilots must be dead because there's no way you can actually survive from that. So yeah, that's basically what I saw. So uh, I remember that time I was sitting in my car and thinking about my job. But suddenly I heard that huge bang and I saw the plane crash into the road. At first time, I was really shocked so I couldn't move and I couldn't even like say the word. And I look at the airplane and the fire uh, was really huge on the airplane. So I jumped out of my car and went there. And I saw firemen helping people out of the airplane, but even it was they were really having a hard time to get people out, out of the airplane. So you know it's kind of sad that uh, you know there is something going on, like people might die or people might have really uh, serious injury, but it couldn't do anything that time. Airport fire and rescue broke through the perimeter fence to reach the aircraft. Seven passengers were rescued, both pilots died. Uh, when we arrived at the scene, the aircraft was almost unrecognizable. It had broken into several pieces and the tail and the cockpit had been separated from the main fuselage. The wings were crumpled and were bent. Parts of the aircraft were still being put out by fire crews and it was hard to believe that anyone could have survived such a violent and harsh accident. Aircraft was deemed airworthy prior to the accident and was approved to fly without an ERT. Manufacturer had released a service bulletin in 1995 and 2010, which recommended operators change the oil filler tube to incorporate a valve assembly with a check valve to restrict the loss of oil if the cap was not secured properly. The company had not complied with this and it was not required to. Service bulletins are issued by aircraft engine and equipment manufacturers as advisory notices that alert 
owners to potential problems involving maintenance or performance modification. Um, they aren't mandatory and neither Transport Canada or the FAA um, gave it the status of an airworthiness directive which would have made it mandatory. But they didn't and so this air airline did not comply with the service bulletin which could have prevented the accident um, if they had made the modification to the oil filler cap as they were recommended to. At the time of the crash, the sky was mostly clear. The wind in Vancouver was reported at 260 at 5 knots and is not considered a factor in the crash. Neither pilot was found to be under the influence of drugs or alcohol, nor was the performance affected by physiological factors. Propeller assemblies were inspected and both had damage consistent with striking the ground while operating at a normal RPM. The oil cap on the left engine was found unlatched and further analysis of the left engine revealed that about 0.8 litres of oil remained on impact, which was still enough to provide oil to the engine. There was no evidence that either engine had malfunctioned to cause a reduction in power leading up to the impact. Apart from the filler cap, both engines did not seem to have any pre-existing mechanical conditions. Uh, when we examined the engines for damage, we found marks that were consistent with the propeller hitting the ground at about 1900 RPM, which was normal for that phase of the flight. The oil uh, level in the left engine was really low, but not low enough that it would have caused the engines to fail at that phase of the approach. The pilots used an electronic center of gravity calculator called CG. The wrong empty weight was used and did not allow for an additional 84 pounds of equipment in the baggage area and cockpit. Calculations done by the TSB, however, showed that the aircraft was not loaded beyond its envelope. The standard operating procedure suggests that the captain should delegate the pre-flight inspection, which includes confirmation that the oil cap is secure. This could be why the co-pilot did not inquire as to whether or not a pre-flight inspection had been done when he arrived at the aircraft. They also do not provide clear direction on how to configure the aircraft for the last 500 feet of the approach, or what to do if the approach was not stabilized and an abnormal situation existed as one did in the accident. The previous inspection had been carried out by an apprentice AME who had been working for the company for six months. The inspection checklist included making sure the oil level was satisfactory and the filler cap was secured. Neither the Apprentice AME or the AME who signed off the work checked to make sure this was completed. The company had a safety management system in place, but it was not required or approved by Transport Canada. It had not identified occurrences of the filler cap being left unlatched, nor had any risks been mitigated. Since the captain usually performed the pre-flight inspection, the co-pilot likely assumed that it had already been done when he arrived. The crew reviewed the low oil pressure checklist but did not brief the approach, which should have included an additional 10 knots above their calculated approach speed. Their approach speed was based on the airplane approaching with full flaps, and the flaps were still in transition when the aircraft crashed. It is possible that the captain tried pitching up instead of adding power to make the runway and save the engine. The aircraft got too slow and stalled due to uncontrollable yaw when he added power to the right engine only. The oil filler cap was left unlocked by the mechanic performing the nightly inspection. The captain and co-pilot failed to do an adequate pre-flight inspection and ignored reports of oil leaking on the ground. The captain let the airplane get too slow on approach and tried adding power to the right engine to compensate. The captain added power to one engine at an airspeed below which the aircraft could be controlled, and the co-pilot made no suggestions or an attempt to rectify the situation. The aircraft took crashed and immediately burst into flames. Rescue efforts were aided by the local fire department, which likely saved the last passenger who remained in the aircraft. Both pilots died on impact.
Action! Stop! Oh shoot, it was gonna... Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 Why? Why? <laughs> I didn't see the weir as I was sitting on the right side of the Ah, <laughs> 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 my leg. Oh, am I going to die? Oh, you Chinese girl, help me. I'm going to think I'm okay! I'm going to die! But actually... Uh, basically, uh, I was coming home, like, like going home from, from school, uh, and I saw planes like taking up just above me, and I was like, wow, that's a plane! And yeah, I looked at it. <laughs> Come on, you did not help! <laughs> <laughs> I know I sound stupid, I always do, but please don't burst into laughter. No, I'm going to just go outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to try not to say some stupid things, that's not going to help. <laughs> so, I thought that maybe I was looking at something that was... Okay, I saw this. <laughs> <laughs> I was so close. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Okay. <clears throat> When you say start, I just start laughing. Oh, you, you Asian girl, I need your help. In, in my, in my pocket. Wait, no, no, in my pocket. There's a knife. I want you to take it and cut my leg. Um, no, you have to help me. You have to help me. Reach in my pocket, in my pocket, take the knife and cut my leg. <laughs> yeah, so I was going home with my bike and um, I passed near an airfield. Like, my bike is a great bike. It's like a bicycle with wheels and pedals and stuff. <laughs> Please, come on, yeah. I, I'm doing the redneck version, okay, cat. Why are you talking about your bike? <laughs> I know, it's just... <laughs> I'm setting the scenery. Bicycle! <laughs> okay. okay, no, that's actually good. That would make it funny. So, I was sitting in my car and thinking about what to make for something. <laughs> you don't have to say that. I was just... I was just like something that was like totally unrelated to the airport okay, okay. at all. Like okay. it could be anything. Okay. Like, okay. Who cares? <clears throat> Supper is <just> so funny. <laughs> so okay, make it less than. <laughs> like, or it's like a great bug. It's a great, great way to stay in shape. Uh, like in winter and stuff. I mean, it's tough, but it's a, it's a tough sport. Like it's like the, I'm tough. So whatever, I'm going on with my bug, and I pass near an airfield, like with airplanes and stuff. And there's an airplane. It just takes off like a bit behind me and I'm like with my bike like riding and I hear the, the thing it goes like boom just behind me like I, I just turn around I'm like whoa man the iron plane just exploded and yeah so I, I'm a bit shocked and I look at my leg it's full of blood like really full of blood I, I'm like cut like really in my leg and so uh, I wait, I, I, I'm a bit shocked because first I lost my dog like two weeks ago and <laughs> you guys are not helping me. <laughs> well, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to reach the viewer. <laughs> Yet some just gonna kill it by a car. How can you laugh at that? I love that. I couldn't just... You love it. What are you doing, man? Hard.